Hey everyone, it's Kyle here and in this week's tutorial I'm going to teach you how to make a smart deceleration program that exits based on motor rotations. Today's video is going to be kind of part two of last week's video. So last week I showed you how to make a smart acceleration program. This week I'm showing you how to make a smart deceleration program. And like last week's program, this week's program was contributed by a viewer on my channel and the deceleration program exits based on motor rotations. So you can use motor rotations to control how long the robot is decelerating for. This is opposed to the program that I made a while ago which uses exclusively time which can be kind of unpredictable. Using motor rotations to control the deceleration makes it extremely predictable because you can customize the acceleration, things like the starting speed, the ending speed, and the rate of deceleration, and it won't affect how long the robot is actually driving for. It will always drive a consistent distance no matter what the deceleration is doing, which is of a special interest to FLL and WRO participants. The program that I'm showcasing in this week's video was created by a viewer on my channel named Ben Bendik Skarpness. Bendik is from Norway and formerly a part of FLL Team Gozen. Bendik saw some of my videos and was inspired to create even cooler versions of my programs. And so big thanks to Bendik for providing these programs to me so I can share them with you today. Now for a walkthrough of the programming behind this deceleration algorithm. This is what we're going to be focusing on right here. This is the my block where all of the deceleration program is streamlined into. And it lays out all of the parameters that you can use to customize the deceleration properties without having to actually go into the programming. If you'd like to learn more about building my blocks and defining parameters, I have a separate tutorial and you can click on that in the top right corner to learn some more. Anyway, back to the deceleration. All of these parameters let you adjust various aspects of the deceleration. The names are still in Norwegian, but I can certainly translate for you. This first one adjusts the steering that the robot is going to do while it's decelerating. This works exactly the same way as the standard move steering block, where zero is directly straight ahead, a positive value is steering to the right, and a negative value is steering to the left. Next we have the minimum speed, uh, which is the, the speed that your robot is going to drive down to. And then we have this, which is latency, which is the amount of time the robot waits in between each time it adjusts the speed down one notch. So this is how you adjust the rate of deceleration, or how quickly the robot's going to drop down from its current speed to its minimum speed. And this is a time value in seconds. And then finally we have the rotation count, and this is how the robot stays within a certain number of rotations. And so you can drive a consistent distance every time no matter what the acceleration is doing and that's one of the really cool features of this deceleration program you'll notice that there's no option for a forward or backward switch like on the acceleration program that I uh, discussed last week and that's because this deceleration automatically detects which direction you're going in and adjusts the programming accordingly and you can see here you have to have the robot starting at some kind of speed beforehand before it moves into the deceleration Let's look at what's going on inside of this block. So I'll click over here and expand the programming. You can see the very first thing that happens is all of the parameters that you defined before are red and then they're saved in these variables so they can be used later in the program. Then the robot is going to read the motor power on motors B and C and add them together and divide by two. So it takes the average speed between the two motors and stores that as the current speed. And this is how the robot detects which speed it's starting at and which direction it's starting in. And then thus which way to adjust the speed in order to get a deceleration to occur. Then it's going to reset the rotation count on motor B's rotation sensor. And this is how the robot accurately measures the distance it's traveled. So it stays within that number of rotations that you defined before. Then it's going to look at the speed in the sign of its value to see which way the robot is starting in. So it, it asks itself forward or backwards. So if the speed is greater than zero, then the robot is starting in the forward direction and it needs to subtract to its speed in order to get it to slow down. And if this is returns false, so if the speed is not greater than zero, then it's negative, the robot's driving in reverse, and the, the robot needs to add to that number to get it to slow down. 
So let's focus on the top case, which is the true case first. So it's going to read the robot's current speed and then compare it to the minimum speed that you set, which is the target that you're trying to get to at the end of the deceleration. So if the speed is indeed greater than the minimum that you set, then it can make the robot go slower. And it does that by subtracting 1 from the speed variable, so speed minus 1, and saving that as the new speed va value. If this is not true, then it's not going to adjust speed at all. It's going to maintain the robot at whatever minimum speed it's at, which is the minimum speed that you defined. And that's how this program keeps the robot driving at that minimum speed and keeps it within that rotation count, no matter what the acceleration is doing. And then it's going to apply the speed that it calculated here and the steering setting that you defined before. And then it's going to use this latency variable to set up the amount of time the robot's going to wait in between each increments of the speed. So each time the robot decreases its speed by one, it's going to wait a little bit, and that time is going to adjust how quickly or how slowly the robot's going to drop down from its starting speed to its final speed. And then the then the program is going to print the current speed to the EV3 display, which is a cool debugging tool. And if the, ro if the robot satisfies the number of rotations that you've defined before, it's going to break out of this loop and allow you to move on to the next part of the programming. And again, this is to keep the robot to drive within a controlled distance. And then we can move down to the bottom case, which is pretty much the same thing, except this is if the robot started driving in the reverse direction. So you can see the inequality gets flipped and then instead of subtracting one from the speed it adds one from the speed because you're starting at a negative power value and adding a positive one to it to increase it and get it closer to zero thus decreasing its magnitude and then the rest of this is all the same Thank you for watching my tutorial this week. If you haven't already, click here to check out my new book. It's called Building Smart LEGO Mindstorm EV3 Robots, and it's now available on Amazon. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this every Thursday. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, drop your suggestion in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.